Okay, good morning, grade 8 students. Uh, this is uh, Teacher Joy bringing another video, uh, supplemental video for you in your lesson in geometry. But before proceeding to this video, uh, may I inform you that if you wanted to ask for more information and details regarding our lesson, uh, you can connect me in my Messenger account using Floor the Second, or you can send me message through my Gmail account, jocelyn.floor at deeped.gov.ph. Or you can text me immediately to my cell number, 0929-730-6443. Okay, so without much ado, let's proceed to this lesson. This is all about circles, and let's have the objectives. Uh, the objectives of the lesson, this lesson is, are the following. Define circle and its parts. Then solve problems involving the parts of a circle. And of course, observe accuracy in solving given problems. What happened to the world without circles? What happened to the world if the wheels of the vehicles are in the form of a square, a rectangle, and or a triangle? So with those given questions, you can answer it by yourself. Let's proceed to the importance of a circle in the world, of course. So these are the different uses of circle, not in one aspect of life, but in all aspects of life. Number one, circle are used in geography, astronomy, navigation, and transportation. The illustration that I have in the previous slide are all examples of uh, vehicles so my question is what happened to the world if for example the wheels of the vehicles are in the form of a square a triangle and a rectangle so we cannot imagine how the world if in the absence of the circle next importance of a circle is used as basic forms in fine arts and architecture which is uh, more pleasing to the eye. Then the second one, uh, the third one is considered as the prime factor in the development of civilization. So meaning there's a lot of uh, things that we need to use the circles. Like these objects here, we have the stethoscope, the CDs, the DVDs, um, the clock, which are in a circular form, and all those things that are in a shape of a circle. These are very, very important in the world, even in what aspects of your job or profession. But still, circles are very important. Okay, let's define, define first what is a circle. A circle is the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point. So if you have noticed in the figure, there is a point at the very center of the circle and it is labeled letter A. So meaning this a circle is called a circle A. And you have also noticed that there are dots on the circle. So therefore, those are equidistant from the center of the circle. We say equidistant equal in distance all the points that lies on the circle are equal in distance from that location where that point was placed or located through the center of the circle so that is why circle is defined as the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point okay next is how to name a circle by the way how to name the circle circles are named by their centers so in the illustration given, circle is labeled with its center as letter A. So the figure shows a circle with center A, thus the circle called circle A. Or in symbol, you have to write a circle or a, a small circle with that at the center, then followed by letter A, which is the label for the center. So that is how will you name, how will you name the circle then proceed to parts of a circle what are the different parts of a circle there are points on in 
and outside the circle. So the points in the circle makes up the interior of the circle, while the points outside the circle are considered to be exterior points. So if you have noticed the lots of dots or points outside the circle in the given illustration, and there is only one point in the interior of the circle, which is labeled letter A, and that is the center of the circle. Then let's proceed to the first part of uh, the part of a circle, which is called the radius, or in plural, it is called as radii. So the segment joining the center of a circle to a point on the circle, that is what we call as radius. In the illustration, uh, the center is labeled letter O, and another point on the circle is let, uh, labeled letter A, and that is what we call as radius, OA, or uh, you can reverse the name of the radius, AO. But usually, uh, it should start from the center to uh, the label of any point on the circle in naming the radius. Okay, that is the radius of a circle. Next is the diameter. The diameter is a cord that passes through the center of a circle. And that is uh, illustrated by segment AB or diameter AB. In the illustration, it is considered a circle O because the center is named as uh, point O. While there's, uh, there are points on the circle which is labeled A and B, which passes through the center of the circle. Therefore, from point A passing through the center O through point B on the other side of the circle, that is what we call as the diameter of the circle. Next is the chord. A chord is a segment joining two points on a circle. So if you remember, a segment is a chord that passes through the center of a circle. It is a special kind of a chord where it passes through the center. While the definition of a chord is a segment joining two points on a circle. Wherever the point is located, as long as it lies on the circle, uh, as long as it doesn't pass through the center, it is considered as the chord. So that is why I have mentioned earlier that the diameter is a special kind of a chord where it passes through the center of the circle. So in this example or in this illustration, uh, using circle O, a uh, circle C, um, AB or segment AB is considered as the chord. Then the next one is the second or the second line. It is a line that intersects the circle at exactly two points. Exactly two points, meaning those points that connect the second line are the points that lies anywhere on the circle. So in circle O, as our illustration, uh, sigma, a line DC, line DC or, uh, no, no, line AB is what we call as the second line that intersects the circle at exactly two points, at point D and at point C. So that is a second line. Next is a tangent line. A tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So meaning it does not pass to another part of the circle, but rather it will intersect a circle at exactly one point. And in this illustration, uh, there is a line that intersects a circle at point C, and that point of intersection is what we call as point of tangency, while the tangent of the circle is uh, tangent AB or line AB. That is the tangent of the circle. Then let's proceed to central angle. Central angle is an angle formed by two radii of a circle with its vertex at the center of the circle. So in the figure, angle BAC is a central angle. So if you have noticed, our the label for the center of the circle is also used as the vertex of the angle. When we say vertex, that is the intersection of the two uh, lines or two radii that are connected to each other. So that is what we call as vertex. So 
using the vertex as the, uh, the using the center as the vertex of the given angle and that is what we call a central angle so in the illustration we can name the central angle as angle bac or the reverse of it as angle uh, cab that is a central angle where the vertex of the angle is at the center of the given circle that is the central angle let's proceed to the arc an arc is a connected part of or portion of a circle connected part or portion of a circle if it is half the circle the arc is considered as the semicircle in the figure in circle o arc cab c a b and arc c d b are considered semicircles the arcs that composes uh, half of the circle is considered a semicircle so meaning in the given illustration since there are points aside from c and b there are points that lies on the circle a points a and points d so that makes up the semicircle so from point c then point A, then point B, that uh, that composes or that makes up the semicircle. That is also an example of an arc. Then the other way around, since there are two uh, semicircle in a circle, so point C, point D, and point B composes again another semicircle in circle O. Next is... Um, the major arc. If an arc is more than half of a circle, then it is called a major arc. In the given illustration, or in the given figure, or circle P, arc ACB, which is uh, using the blue colored line, I'll repeat, points, connecting points, uh, a, C, and B is what we call as um, major arc. While the arc, which is labeled in a pink color, that is arc AB, is considered as the minor arc. So, meaning, if an arc is more than half a circle, that is called as major arc. While if the arc is less than the semicircle or half of the circle that arc is a minor arc okay can you now see the relationship between the radius and the diameter of the circle based on the given definition and illustration in the previous slides okay so here there are two circles circle o in the circle at the left side you can see that there is a line joining the center towards point A. And that is considered as the radius of the circle. That is OA, segment OA, as the radius of the circle. While the circle at the right, which is, again, this is called a circle O because the center is labeled O. While there is a point, uh, there is a points A and B at opposite sides of the circle, passing through the center of the circle and that is segment AB and that is considered as the diameter of the circle. So you have now seen the difference between uh, the radius and the diameter of the circle. If you have looked at its illustration, the radius is one half of the diameter, right? While the diameter is twice the radius. Diba? So, we have here, the diameter of a circle is equal to 2 radii of the circle. So, in the formula, if you are to find the diameter of the circle wherein you are given the radius only, so we have here the formula. D is equal to 2 times the radius, so meaning twice of the radius is equal to the diameter. While the formula for finding the radius of a circle, if ever you are given the diameter, is that 
the radius of a circle is equal to half of a diameter of the circle. Or, R is equal to one half times D. D stands for diameter and R stands for the radius. Okay, so we have here a sample uh, problem or sample, uh, yes, problem in finding diameter wherein radius is given. Okay, so there are two illustrations wherein one of the circle has a radius of 6 and the other circle has a radius of 1.7 centimeter. So let us try solving first the first circle with radius of 6. So the given is radius is equal to 6. Then the formula in finding the diameter because the question here is find the diameter given the radius. So the formula for finding the diameter is twice the radius or two times the radius. So what will you do is only to multiply or to substitute the value of the given radius in the given formula. So D is equal to 2 times R, where 2 is constant, meaning twice, uh, that is constant, and R is equivalent to 6 as per given illustration. Therefore, 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So that's it. That is the uh, diameter of the first circle. Let's proceed to the second circle whose diameter, uh, whose radius is 1.7 centimeter. Again, as I said, uh, you have to write the given, which is in terms of radius, that is 1.7 centimeter. Then write the formula for finding the diameter, which is 2 times R. Then substitute the value of R in the given formula. Therefore, D is equal to 2 times R or D is equal to 2 times 1.7 therefore resulting to 3.4 centimeter. That is how to find the diameter if the given is the radius. While the other way around, you have to find the radius when the given is the diameter of the circle. So there is an illustration, circle P, with radius uh, PC and diameter AB. So number one, let us try solving uh, AB is equivalent to 20 meters. And AP is equivalent to blank. And PC is also equivalent to blank. Uh, our task this uh, time is to find the value of segment AP and segment PC. Therefore, since... We are to find the radius when the given is the diameter. Therefore, radius is, as I said, it is half of the diameter. So the formula for finding the, diam uh, the radius when the given is the diameter is that R is equal to one half times D. So one half of D. Therefore, um, AP is equal to 10 and PC is also equal to 10. Why? Because uh, finding its radius, the, rad uh, the diameter is 20 and one half of 20 is 10. So that is why AP and PC are equal. Why? Because AP, segment AP and segment PC are all diameters as radius of the circle and even uh, segment PB. That is also a diameter or a uh, radius of the circle. Then let's proceed to another example. We have AB is equal to 18 feet. So the diameter of the circle is 18 feet. Uh, find PC and find PB when the diameter of the given circle is 18 feet. So again, using the formula, R is equal to 1 half D. Then uh, substitute the value of D in the given formula, therefore, one half of uh, the diameter, which is AB, is equal to 18 feet. So, therefore, one half of 18 is 9. Therefore, as I said, PC, PA, or AP, and PB are all radius of the circle. Therefore, 
they have all equal in they are all equal in measure so that is how to find radius when the given is when the diameter is given okay so maybe i have discussed the the topic well therefore let's proceed to exercises you need to work this out at home and submit your work using your uh, together with your outputs when you return it the next uh, week. So we have here, you have a short quiz, and the other one is the project. So let us try first the quiz. So there are two parts of this quiz wherein you need to answer this. The part A and part B. Part A is you have to answer using by by illustrating your solutions number one is find the diameter if the radius is 3 cm and the other one is find the radius if the diameter of uh, the circle is 2.5 centimeter while letter b or part b of this short quiz is a true or false test number one all radii of a circle are congruent so you have to write in your answer sheet uh, true or the other way around false if the statement is incorrect then the second one the second statement is a radius is a chord of a circle then a line may intersect a circle at exactly one point then a chord is a diameter a tangent passes through the center of a circle and the last one is a diameter is a chord okay so that is the part b of your short quiz while part of your a project is this one an infinite number of designs can be created using a circle please take note that uh, these activities are your performance task in your uh, in this topic so you need to construct a design using circles Sh shades or color your design so that it will be pleasing to uh, the eyes so we have here a sample illustration or a sample uh, project which I have shown you so that you can as you can make your own also like this but I, I, I don't tell you that you have to make the same as this one but rather you can make a circle out of this uh, a series or infinite connections of circles so like this so what will you do is to create your own uh, project using or based on these different rubrics. Number one, originality and creativity, that is 30%. Harmony and balance in your drawing is 30%. Visual appeal, again, another 30%. And 10% of it lies to the timeliness, meaning uh, if this video is posted, then a week after that, that would be the, the, the next Friday of that will be the submission of this uh, project. So I will just inform you using our group chat so you can submit it on time because timeliness is part of the percentage in parts of the rubric which contains 10% uh, of the grading system. So I hope you have understand and you have taken, you have observed something from this video lesson. Thank you for believing one's ability.